from the Gospel according to John, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. <coughs> On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And he filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it had come from, all of the servants who had drawn the water knew. The steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and re revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Good morning, church. You could see the difference everywhere you looked. Rooms were growing emptier, and there was a rising tide of lightheartedness as decades' worth of clutter was let go of. Hallelujah! There was a box of paper goods from the walk to Emmaus in a forgotten corner underneath the stage that probably hasn't seen the light of day in more than a decade. I personally found a spearhead wrapped in a newspaper from 1989, completely rusted over, buried under piles of other things. But that was so rusted over that I labeled it the spear that pierced the side of Christ nearly 2,000 years ago. <laughs> Some call that the spear of destiny. Perhaps a sign of the deep cleansing of our church facilities went through yesterday was the dumpster diver who showed up to scold us for throwing away so much great stuff. <laughs> But nothing was more telling than the church member wading through the full 20-yard dumpster in the back of the church building. Mark got a great picture of that, but we'll get to that in the future. Now let's just let out a sigh of relief in celebration of all the efforts our volunteers put in yesterday. Let's just say, phew. Phew. Sisters and brothers, it feels so good to let stuff go. Maybe that's why that song, Let It Go, from the children's movie Frozen, was so popular. It's a female power ballad, so I won't attempt to sing it for you. But if somebody feels so inspired, you go ahead and sing it right now. that serves a proof of all the incredible ministries that have taken place here over the many years of this church's service to its community, but that no longer serves any other purpose than the nostalgia. Did you know that when the founder of Methodism, John Wesley, died, they took a plaster mask, a plaster cast of his face? In fact, when I went to seminary in Drew University, that's where it's kept. One of the original copies, there are three copies that they made of this face, is still on display there. Can you believe that they need copies, by the way? <laughs> and this is before movie reps. I understand that the World Methodist Archive actually still has two locks of Wesley's hair. As interesting as that may be, and I personally find it brilliant that we can actually see that what his face looked like, sometimes we just don't know when to let stuff go. Get, uh, Galileo Galilei, the famous astronomer from the 17th century, died under house arrest by the church for saying that the sun was the center of the universe instead of the earth. However, almost a hundred years after his death, someone was still pining for Galileo because Anton Francesco Gori dug up his body and removed a finger which is now still on display in Italy. Church, you can just say, that's gross. So, how do you suppose that meeting in heaven went? By the way, I took your finger while you were sleeping. Now, I don't mean to minimize the importance of history, after all, in many ways, the book we put so much faith in, the Bible, is a collection of our history as a people of faith. Understanding that history allows us to properly interpret the scriptures and real life. 
But there is a line that we as human beings tend to cross between honoring our history and collecting junk from days gone by. Amen? Amen. All right. The ministries that our church has engaged in have been powerful, wonderful expressions of God love and faithfulness. I am the true vine, Jesus said, and my Father is the vineyard keeper. He removes any of my branches that don't produce fruit, and he trims any branch that produces fruit, that's you, so that it will produce even more fruit. Yesterday we honored our history by trimming our vines so that our branches can continue to bring forth new fruits. In a big way, we are more ready to grow today than we were yesterday morning. Now, back in the first century A.D., Jesus' contemporary must have wondered if their religion would, would ever last. Judaism seems to have been under threat for centuries. <coughs> their entire nation had been under duress for hundreds of years, had finally been conquered, and its people had been carried into exile in two stages and brought back to rebuild. Yet time and time again in the period that followed that rebuilding, they were forced to bow to the different kingdoms that inherited Israel. They were the nation of Israel. Those who, as their name implies, struggled with God. But under that kind of intense persecution, even they had to wonder how much longer they could keep the celebration of God's presence going. Would they tire out before the task of revealing God to the world was done? Given this content, excuse me, given this context, it may have been less of a surprise to early readers of John's Gospel that Jesus' first miracle recorded there is to keep the celebration of a marriage union going. The marriage of these two unnamed people became a symbolic representation of the relationship between God and God's people, the church, who were also joined together for the task of glorifying God. Church, remind ourselves, marriage is to glorify God. Marriage is to glorify God. It was so appropriate for Jesus to take the cisterns used in religious cleansing. In doing so, he took a symbol of God's ability to release the people from their sins, and by his miracle of water into wine, revealed that this deep celebration of God's relationship would endure. God wasn't done with them yet. The Lord was still able to cleanse them from their sins, was still with them in their time of trouble, and still invested in their relationship. Church, if you would agree with that, would you say, Jesus set them free to keep on hoping? Jesus set them free to keep on hoping. Today, there are so many people, I think you would agree, who need to be given the gift of hope. According to the 2010 Hunger in America study, about 64,900 different people on Long Island receive emergency food assistance through Island Harvest and Long Island Cares every single week. And of these, 74% are considered food insecure, which means they either don't know where their next meal is going to come from, or they are involuntarily, involuntarily cutting back on meals and food portions. Amen. Nearly half report having to choose between paying the rent or the utilities and paying for food. Of this population, 4% are senior citizens, 6% are homeless and are made up of individuals who are victims of abuse or have been forced out of closed institutions. And approximately 70% are from minority populations who face educational, language, and employment barriers. Church, there are still Syrian refugees spread out across Europe. Do you know? At this present moment, UMCOR is acting on our behalf to provide disaster relief, water, sanitation, hygiene, sustainable agriculture, or development through the following. 15 projects in the United States of America. Two projects in Haiti. One project in Armenia. Four projects in the Sudan, two projects in South Sudan, one project in the Congo, one project in Japan. And this does not include sustained efforts like the Sandy Relief efforts still going on here on Long Island, of which in New York and New Jersey they have rebuilt 448 homes since Hurricane Sandy. There is a real need for hope. Amen? Amen. And whose joy is it to share that hope? It's our joy to share that hope. Amen? Somebody should shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. At the wedding in Cana, Jesus sent the newly created wine to the wine steward, whose discerning palate would taste the wine and decide if and how it was to be distributed to the guests. Without knowing where it came from, he concluded that the new wine was better than what he had been tasting before. The people of this world, you see, can tell the difference between the ordinary that, and what flows from the Holy One. Amen. They may not know what they want or that they want it yet, 
but they will when they taste it. Somebody say yes. 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 If indeed we possess in these cracked pots of ours the richness of our Creator, Savior, and Redeemer, then we just have to be willing to share it with those who have not yet tasted it. If they don't have the opportunity to taste and see that the Lord is good, how will they know? How will they have the chance to discover for themselves how priceless is the love of their Savior? Rich or poor, black or white, young or old, gay or straight, anyone who isn't currently sharing the good news is one who needs to be given it. After all, what is coming is better than what has been. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and he has told us that he is coming soon. So let's, whoop, not lose my sheep, but let's praise it from the mountaintop. <laughs> I see this one. Or as the prophet wrote in Isaiah, For Zion's sake I won't keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I won't sit still, until her righteousness shines out like a light, and her salvation blazes like a torch, if you're British. <laughs> Nations will see your righteousness, all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name, which the Lord's own mouth will determine. You will be a splendid garland in the Lord's hand, a royal turban in the palm of God's hand. You will no longer be called abandoned, and your land will no longer be called deserted. Instead, you will be called, My delight is in her, and in your land, married, because the Lord delights in you, and your land will be cared for once again. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Sisters and brothers, it gets better. <laughs> in a good and joyful thing, to offer ourselves and our gifts to Almighty God, this morning, as we collect our offering, there are envelopes in your, in your bulletins this morning you can use for the Human Relations Day offering. This day does, contributes quite a lot to anyone who is bound up and stuck, but I'll just read you from 2013 some of the things that have been going on through our, this offering. For example, Exodus House and the Oklahoma Annual Conference supports drug treatments, reunification with family members, legal assistance, and counseling for former prisoners. Human Trafficking and Domestic Violence Committee in Bethany UMC in New Orleans seeks ways to address the situation of youth caught in the, in the cycle of trafficking. And United Methodist Seminar Program Scholarships are offered for racial and ethnic groups, enabling youth to attend United Methodist Seminars on National and International Affairs in Washington. Just three simple ways in which just in 2013 we were able to do make a difference through this United Methodist offering. I will leave the complete list from 2010 to 2013 in the other room. Should, actually, I'll put it right here on the organ for you to look at if you'd like to check it out on your way out. Sisters and brothers, let us collect the offering together to take up our love for our Savior. For we collect not only monetary gifts, which are expressions of that love, but all of the gifts of who we are. Let us offer ourselves and our gifts to Almighty God. <laughs> 